It's May 8th, 2006, and the BBC has just committed the biggest blunder in live news history, and no one realized anything went wrong until this moment. This face and the background behind this moment inspired me to create my first video, because no matter how much news coverage this moment may have gotten, the full story hasn't been told. And in order to tell the full story, we have to start with the most plausible explanation as to what would make a BBC journalist panic like this. Imposter syndrome, which manifests as self-doubt among high-achieving individuals. It's important to note that imposter syndrome can affect people despite their skills, talents, and experience. For example, let's meet someone who absolutely should not be experiencing imposter syndrome. This is Guy Cuny. He looks a little nervous, but he shouldn't be. After he was born in Africa, he went on to become the UK's first technology journalist in 1978. He's already written about the court case he's here today to talk about. We'll talk more about exactly what that case is later. If there's a journalist qualified to talk about this situation, it's Guy. And he's probably just a little nervous to talk in front of a camera. He'll probably settle in once the interview starts. So what does this all mean for the industry and the growth of music online? Well, Guy Cuny is the editor of the technology website uh, News Wireless. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. Except there's one problem. This is not Guy Cuny. This man is live in front of millions of viewers, and he doesn't know anything about the court case until a few seconds ago. He didn't know what his name was. This guy does not have imposter syndrome. He's just an imposter. I've watched this interview quite a few times and I, I just love this moment because you can clearly see exactly when he decides he's gonna stick it out and commit to the content. See? You see? Well, you don't see it. He moves right there. Wait, wait. Right there. But at this point, we've effectively transitioned from an interview with an expert in the field to a guy that has no idea what he's talking about. Good morning to you. Good morning. Were you surprised by this uh, verdict today? I'm very surprised to see this verdict to, to come on me because I was not expecting that. When I came, uh, they told me something else and I'm coming. You got an interview that so it's a big surprise anyway. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I don't know about the rest of you, but this took me right back to my sixth grade class where, you know, one of the kids clearly did not read the book that they're doing the report on. Quiet, everyone. So Jacob did his book report on the Hunger Games. Tell us about the book. Yeah, so there's these guys and they're very hungry because they play video games all night and then they ask their mom for food, but they didn't get it, so they're still hungry and eventually they starve to death because of their big <gasps> mom and that's why it's called the Hunger Games. Brilliant, Jacob. Thank you. Anyway, the whole reason for this interview is a lawsuit between Apple Core, the Beatles music company, and Apple Computers, you know, the current most valuable company in the world. The core problem here is both companies name themselves Apple. And while harvesting different markets would have allowed them to share a name, that's not what's been happening here. I made a little chart to kind of describe what's been happening for the past 30 years. As of this moment, we're right here. And that brings us back to the present and this confused man whose name is not Guy Cuny. He's not a technology consultant. He doesn't know the judge just handed down a verdict in Apple Corps favor. He's just a different guy. With regards to uh, the cost that's in, in, involved, um, do you think uh, now more people will be downloading online? Uh, actually, if you can go everywhere, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of people downloading uh, to the internet uh, and the website, uh, everything they want. But I think uh, it's, it's much better for the development and uh, to improve people what uh, they want and to get uh, on the easy way and so fast uh, the things they're looking for. This answer is probably a little too meandering to be considered good, but if you allow me to simplify it down a bit, it's basically what happened. So this guy probably knows a little something about technology, which begs the question, who is this guy? Meet Guy Goma. The source of the confusion is obvious. Guy Goma came here for an interview today, it's just his interview was supposed to be with the BBC's IT department. It's funny how two entities having the same first name can cause confusion, which is what he really meant when he said, When I came, uh, they told me something else and I'm coming. You got an interview there. But regardless of whether he's supposed to be here or not, he's got one question left before he can escape from live news hell. This does really seem to be the way the music industry is progressing now, that people want to go onto the website and download music. Exactly. You can go everywhere on the cyber cafe and you can check. You can go easy. It's going to be a very easy way for everyone to get something to the internet. Thank you, Thanks very much indeed. I think we can uh, now also speak to uh, Rob Pitton, who's... Uh
At this point, the BBC returns to normal, and the anchor got to someone who knew what they were talking about, but the rest of the world was still struggling to process what exactly just happened. Later that day, the real Guy Cuny broke one of the cardinal laws of the internet, which is do not tweet when you're miffed. I mean, back then it was a blog, but he still had some offensively British disdain for the whole event. There were several surprising things about my interview. We'll ignore the fact that I wasn't given it. Yes, I'd wasted several hours of my life, but at least I was getting some good publicity out of it. Those producers didn't care much about the fact that my reputation was completely shredded. After all, was a journalist going to sue the BBC and get blacklisted? Of course not. Sense of humor failure? Me. What makes you think that? And I really think his reaction to this really speaks to how different 2006 is to right now. If this were to happen today, it would have been used for marketing and it would have been used for merch and it would have driven up traffic to his blog. But at the time, Guy Cuny was understandably upset. I think my favorite quote that he said in response to the whole situation was, in the case of two apples, there was no need for two Guy Cunies. 10 years after the incident, the BBC uploaded a summary video of what happened to their YouTube channel. It went on to get 5 million views, and I know it was just some intern that like slapped this together real quick, but if the incident happened because you didn't know who Guy Cuny is, what would be the worst mistake you could make while making this video? Can you spot it? If you're the BBC and you're making a video about a highly publicized mistake you made, why wouldn't you do one Google search and see that the man was a technology journalist? So how exactly did this IT interviewee end up live on national television? Basically what happened is there were two green rooms and one guy was in each of them. The show's producer was in a big rush and he goes to the one called Stage 6 Reception. He asks the receptionist if Guy's there, and she says yes, and she points to Guy Goma. Now, remember, this producer has seen a picture of Guy Cuny. So he goes up, a little skeptical to Guy Goma, and he says, are you Guy? And Guy Goma says, yes, because he is Guy. Now remember, this producer has seen Guy Cuny before. He's read his blog. And then the producer takes Guy Goma to the main stage and puts him live on national television. And remember, this man has seen a picture of Guy Cuny. What do you think Guy Cuny looks like? Call me crazy, but I just don't see race. I guess I'm just the least racist person here. Okay. Something that doesn't come up when this story goes viral for the nth time on Reddit or TikTok is exactly what happened, which is odd because Reddit and TikTok are normally where you get the best information. <laughs> Who's writing this? <laughs> but anyway, it's always presented as this story of an unlikely hero clutching up to save the interview on the biggest stage. But that's just flat out wrong. The real hero here was the interviewer. Okay, let me let me move over. Let me there you go. Get a good look at her. Guess her name. Three, two, one. Did you just guess Karen? Because According to a reputable source, that's worse than saying the N-word. I can't believe you monster. You'd assume her name was Karen. I mean, you're right, but that's not the point, you racist. But anyway, the real hero here is Karen. First, she asks a really difficult question. Were you surprised by this uh, verdict today? Then after Guy fumbles the bag, giving an IT interviewee answer to it, she immediately switches to softballs. She actually gives him the right answers that he gets so praised for in the question. She spoon-fed him exactly what to say. In fact, Karen noticed something was off about the guy she was about to interview before the interview even started. She even tried to contact her boss to, you know, see what was up. But luckily, word didn't get to him in time, which means that the only reason we have this beautiful moment is because Karen didn't talk to the manager. However, from the BBC's internal blog to Reddit to TikTok, everybody upon hearing of this story has the exact same question. Did he get the job? The BBC actually informed him live on air that he did not get the job. <laughs> I think one of the funniest parts about the Guy Goma interview is that you can play any portion of it and it's apparent that this guy is just doing his best but is clearly not prepared for this. Which is quite funny because that's exactly how I felt making this video. I was unable to look at the camera, I deep fried some sections of the audio like super bad, and the video was yellow. This video was the first one I ever made and full disclosure, 
it took me three months. The other four videos on this channel are better, more in depth, longer, funnier, and they were made in much less time. But I guess that's the beauty of getting thrown into the deep end and trying to swim. You kind of get incrementally better as you go along. And because you enjoyed this video enough to get to the end, you're gonna love my video about Rumble. It's a conservative version of YouTube that's equal parts interesting, fascinating, and horrifying. You should check it out right now because not only is this video amazing, you can see me fake it till I make it just like Guy. I'm sorry, I'm confused. When can I start talking about my bra?